was live today. Welcome, everyone. <coughs> if my voice would work, that would be helpful. Welcome to the sixth stream for Pokemon Blue. I just realized that there's an important thing, well, a combination of a few minor important things, that I haven't prepared for yet. So, I get to do that now. So, this all, what I'm going to do in the next few minutes, is not going to be in the YouTube video, this is going to be like a behind the scenes thing. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Pokemon Blue, episode 21, stream number 6. We ended off episode 20, stream 5, you remember, with a pretty exciting thing. We showed off the Mew truck where there wasn't really anything, but it was the first time ever that I was there. Uh, first time ever I got to see it, one of the very few things I hadn't done or seen in the Generation 1 Pokemon games. This is indeed the truck many. Yeah, I showed it off at the end of the last stream, and I thought it was nice to start off our stream here. Because I have access to the place now. Completely, legally, I didn't cheat. Hi, Manny. You just caught the start, so welcome. Uh, you'll see ducks uh, in the overlay instead of Snorlax. Ducks will be in here for a little bit, just to fly me around some places. Ooh, we're starting with something. House for Manny, thank you very much. Alright, Coops, will you surface out of here, please? And then our dear Ducks is going to take us to Lavender Town. Not to Saffron, like I said at the end of the last episode. No. There are some things that I've said I've wanted to do for a while. Sometimes I forgot, sometimes I said, Hey, chat, can you give me some suggestions? But then, maybe they didn't immediately come, or I forgot about it again. I'm going to deposit some Pokemon, swap some, and put some other things in. So, for a moment, this is just momentarily. Aragorn, Coops, and Amigo. Could you just chill in the box a little bit? So that's you out, you out, you out. Who are going to take their places? Well, you'll see that I'm in box number two, because I've actually done a little bit of organizing, because I felt that if I catch a few more Pokemon, box one will be full. So in box two, I put everything that's related to an in-game trade. Either there's something I want to trade away, or something I'll be getting back. Or something that I got back. Dux is the only exception. That one's generally in box one. If it's in the box. Let's see Radar here, which I'm gonna trade away. Spot, Terry, Marcel, Lola, which we've got a Ninja. Aragorn, Coops, Amiga, obviously my team, but who's Ninja? Ninja is that slow bro that we never caught at Seafoam Islands. I decided that 1% encounter chance might take a while before we find it again. So... I decided to just catch it off stream. So we're gonna get Ninja. And I call that Ninja because it was just hiding and it, we couldn't really see it. So Slowbro's in. We're going to change box to number one. But there's two more Pokemon here. I want to get Mewtwo out. Remember, that's the name for our Mew. And then... Kiddo. Or Eevee. I want to do something with them. Slowbro, Nim. <laughs> yeah, there is something I wanted to do with some of these Pokemon. Mewtwo, I want to rename. So if you have a nickname idea for this Mew, tell me in the next like 20 seconds because I'm about to nickname it. I call them Mewtwo because it was my second Mew, Mew number two, but I didn't like uh, giving it the name of another Pokemon species. So, I'm going to change it. Mewtwo's nickname is about to be changed. Because it's not really Mewtwo. Instead... We are going to name it... Dexter. Wait, actually, no, not Dexter, because that's a human name. Never mind. 
I said I wouldn't give human names. All right, I'll do the first thing that comes to mi comes to mind when I look around. Okay, it's not necessarily a standard nickname, but it's not like I'm gonna use the Pokemon. Welcome, Window. I looked around, saw so Window. Was like, okay, Window. So we have a Window now on our team. <laughs> It's a stupid nickname, but that's sometimes how I do things. I just look around, the first thing I see, or the first thing I think about, that's what I call it. Like, I had a thing called sunglasses or wallet as well. So this is Window. This is actually the Mew that we caught. Right here. This was the spot where we caught it. But, that's not the only thing we're gonna do, because also off stream, I bought an extra Firestone. Because I said we're gonna evolve the Eevee. We're never gonna use the Eevee, but I wanted to evolve the Eevee, so go, Eevee. Eevee Digivolve to Flareon. So that's another Pokemon for our Pokedex. We have a Flareon. Let's see. Ha! Call it Windows 98 since that's when Pokemon launched. Yeah, it, it Red and Blue were released in the States in 98, that's correct. Windows 98. You know what, I like it enough, I'm gonna change it again. <laughs> Pretty sure you can do numbers. I like that. Okay, interesting start to this episode then. I think I know what will eventually be in the episode, but it depends on how long the first major thing is that we're gonna do, because these are all minor things to start us off. Win... those... No, we can't do numbers. Numbers came later. I think in Gen 3. Ah, it's gonna stick to... we're gonna stick to window. Alright, one more thing that we want to do is the entire reason that we caught a slow bro. And if I recall correctly, that's near Fuchsia City. I didn't actually look this one up, this is based on memory. I'm pretty sure it was in this place. Looking for a slow bro, yes! Well, Ninja, the chat got to know you for like two minutes, maybe. Probably a bit longer at this point. Gonna trade Slowbro away. Bye, Ninja. Slowbro went to trainer. For Alka Slowbro, it's called Ninja. Trainer. Sends a licky tone. They bid farewell. And just like Jinx, just like Mr. Mime, and the thing was one more somewhere, this is the only place in the game where you can get a licky tone. It has to be a traded one. At least. If you, if you don't trade with other real life people, this is the only place in the game to legally obtain a licky tone. So this is actually outside of the Articuno we caught at the end of the last stream, the end of the last episode. Well, near it, anyway. Uh, before we showed up the Mew truck. That, that's level 50. Besides that, this is actually our highest level Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, Slowbro came and left like a ninja, leaving no trace behind. Yeah. This is Mark, Lickitung. Decent Pokemon. Nothing super great, super special. I don't intend to use it on my team, although because of how hard it is to obtain, or at least... Yeah, getting a, either getting a Slowpoke trading it up or getting a Slowbro trading it. It's not a Pokemon you'd think of first, so... In terms of Pokemon I've never used, or Pokemon pe the general people that play this game are unlikely to use, you could think, in terms of Lickitung, like here, when, you, when you're thinking of what Pokemon might I use in later walkthroughs, because you know my team already um, for this walkthrough, but for future ones, which kind of obscure Pokemon might I use? Maybe not all obscure Pokemon. 
Lol, this mark the start of a new friendship. You mean the friendship that's gonna make me shove him in a box and then never use him again? Because that's exactly what's gonna happen. Please remember that my team members are in box two now. Let's see, window was Mew. I remember our first Mew, Giovanni, is still at the daycare. Uh, south of Cerulean City, that's Route 5. We're gonna check back on that Mew after we've become the champion. Kiddo, the Flareon's gonna go out. And then we'll change box. To box 2. Because I said that all the traded Pokemon in-game trades go there. So that's where Mark goes. And they get Aragorn back. It goes back. This mark is a new box entry. You mean Dex entry? Or there's just an extra place for him in the box? Because he just took the, the spot in the box that was ninjas. And now we're going to change the box again. <laughs> because I was, was going to put ducks in number one. Because we have another team member in here. Cold Sheriff. So that's Flareon out, Mew out, Blastoise in, Persian in, uh, Farfetch'd out, Snorlax in, Lickitung out, Hitmonlee in. I think that's my team now. Looks about right. Alright, let's go actually do some story stuff. If you recall from when we were in Saffron City the last time for a major thing, which was actually when we got ourselves Aragorn. We got out of the fighting dojo. There were these strange security people walking around, blocking off a bunch of places. We were able to get Psychic from that house, so that's now on um, Coconut. Some other one there. This one's blocking off the actual gym. That's not very nice. Here's another guy. The blocking of these houses. It's not nice. But ever since we beat um, the Rocket Haida back in Celadon, remember underneath the game corner, this guy moved because he was sleeping. This is the Sylph Co. Sylph Corporation. And those security guys, you probably guessed that that was Team Rocket. And they have taken over. Eleven floors, you can take the elevator, you can take the stairs. Like, it might not matter for the stats of the character in-game. I'm a stairs guy. Two ways to get around this. Actually, I'm gonna take the elevator, because I want to show something. The boss is on the eleventh floor. So, let's just take the, take the elevator to go to the boss. Because we need to beat the boss, save the company, and get out of here. Problem is... Yeah, boss is like in that room and there's no way to get in there. So, there's two main ways you can get through this place. Obviously, there's many different ways. I'm going to show off two different ones. One, the super speedy one. Fight, how many trainers is minimum to fight? One, two, three, four trainers max. Throughout the entire Sylph Corporation. And you've gone, and you've gone through. The other way is just beat everyone, pick everything up. I'm going to show you most of that first route. Most of the fast routes until it's basically a one-way street. And then I'm going to fight everyone. So when you move in this game, you're moving red around or the world around red. Ooh. Oh wait, there was a thing here um, that I... This is a very minor visual glitch that I wanted to try out. When I leave it, I'm layered on the doors, apparently. Yeah, I can stand on the door. If the player enters the elevator without being on the doors and does not move from that tile afterwards, preventing them from exiting without specifically using the mat's right tile. I can't exit through there. Huh? Yeah, apparently, somehow you can, like, disable this this side, and you can only exit through this side. There's something about that. Anyway, for the fast route through this place, you need 
two floors that you need to know about. Fifth floor, third floor. Starting on the fifth. Really, you don't even need to remember third floor? Because it's actually a shorter way than I remember. I remembered it as do this specific thing on fifth floor, then go to third floor, do something specific there, then you're basically at the end already. But... Yeah, that's not how it works. Okay, there's a scientist guy here. We're gonna dodge him by going below. There's this rocket guy. That's the first guy we have to fight. So we take the war panel. Huge amount of war panels here. Also, there's this. You need a card key. And the way to the boss is blocked off by such a card key. But that's what we can get on the fifth floor. But we have to fight this guy. Alright, our first Pokemon battle of the episode of the stream. Team Rocket with a bunch of whips. They, they still wouldn't let me into Team Rocket, even though I wanted to join Team Rocket. What is it, like episode 5? They still won't let me. Flamethrower. Ha! Huh. Also, someone in the YouTube um, comments, or like in one of the... No, I think it was in the YouTube premiere for episode 20. They asked... Do you know where to get a Firestone? Likely suggesting, hey, you could evolve Vulpix with a Firestone. I know that, but I'm purposely, purposely waiting with it. It's going to be a little while before I evolve it. Alright, so we beat this guy, just has one Arbok. And we pick up the card key. Now, we could continue walking here. I think there's another rocket guy here just blocking us off. Yeah. We're going to fight him later when I do the fight everyone part of the Sylph Corporation. But for now, we just leave. Now, what I normally did in the many times that I've played this game is now walk back to the stairs, go down two flights of stairs, be on third floor, fight one rocket guy, and then go through one of these gates to get to basically near the end already. However, if I recall correctly, if you just open this door and take this teleporter, yep, this looks like the right place. This is third floor. If you would have come from the top of third floor, the north part, you would have had to fight this rocket guy to get past. However, I took the correct teleporter. So I didn't need to do that, so I just take this place. See where the scientist is, so I can dodge him. This teleporter is nice, but we want the teleporter in the back room here. This one doesn't turn. You want this warp tile. No, actually, I said it incorrectly. You actually want this warp tile. It's actually the first one. I mixed the two up. From that point on, once you're in that room, it's a one-way street. So, this is already where my fastest way through the entire place ends. Because it's a one-way street from the point that you go on this uh, warp tile. Something else I do want to show off. Because the rumor, I will show off what is behind that warp tile. But I'll do that once I've done the entire rest of this place. This warp tile is one to remember. Um, actually, this is the start of fighting everyone. Because if you take this warp tile and fight this guy, there's a healing place below. Although that can be accessed from a different floor as well. And we're going to start with this guy, show off the healing place, and then just go from 2nd floor all the way to 11th floor. Fight all the people, um, get all the items, because there's some interesting, cool items in there. There's a red candy in there that I'll probably keep until the, until the end of the game. And then... There's like three or four TMs in this building. One of which I intend to teach to one of my Pokémon. A very strong move. Arguably the best TM in the game is in here. Do you know which one? We will be getting that pretty soon. Open this door. I 
And then between these spits, there's this nice lady here, who isn't part of Team Rocket, who completely heals your Pokémon. So if you want to heal and then quickly go back to basically the end of this dungeon already, if you want to call it that, that's the way to go. Although, although you could just also use this card key. Alright, let's go to second floor, and then fight everyone. Interesting information over here. Create Porygon, the first virtual reality Pokemon. Who's this guy? Oh, apparently there's a juggler who wants to face me? Or maybe he's just like, oh, there shouldn't be someone here. But your rocket hasn't gotten to me yet, or something like that. Not sure whose side he is on.
I think this is the scientist. That rotten president, he shouldn't have sent me to the Tixi branch. Yeah, this is it. This is him. This is the guy. The Tixi branch may not say much. So I'm not sure if his text after the fight suggested more. I also don't remember if it was this version or a later version, but he refers to like real life Russia. In this. So maybe a Tixi branch is already. The Tixi is like a place in Russia? I don't remember. But this is the guy that references real life. And there's only one of the very few that do that. I think in Cinnabar Mansion, there's a mention of real life as well. We got him. And he says, Tixie Branch, it's in Russian no man's land. Russian, Russia, the real live Earth. Here's that reference I was talking about.
Kratos. We'll be selling that. Which one's a TM? Not that one. Okay, now, now I'm not going to have space for this one anymore. And this is the important item. <laughs> TM 26. What will that be? I said it was something special. Arguably the best TM in the game. For Earthquake. 100 accuracy. 100 power. Hey, Coops. You want something to fight electric types with? We get rid of Bite! And Coops now knows Earthquake. And just so you know, its moveset still isn't done. One more change for uh, Blastoise planned. Blastoise has Earthquake now. But I believe that leaves one more rocket on floor 11. Who's right here? Around this score, just on his own. Probably a sad guy, because like, who who was placed here? Do you have an appointment with my boss? Who is blocked off by a wall? I can't even get to him from here. Whoever stationed you here really doesn't like you. And this is where things get really interesting. Because I said from here on out, it's just a straight path, no diversions. This is definitely not sped up in the YouTube edits because, um. Look who's here! What kept you, Alka? <laughs> I thought you'd turn up if I waited here. I guess Team Rocket slowed you down. Not that I care. I saw you on Saffron, so I decided to see if you got better. Instead of helping me beat the boss who was like, just take the war paddle, he's right there. Not really a nice guy, Keys. Not a good move. Five Pokemon. Let's see what you can do in this battle. Pidgeot, level 37. Remember how I said they went up? The last time we fought some with five Pokemon, they had level 25. This one starts with a 37, and it's not as highest. There was one guy with a 32 Arbok, the very first guy we fought. There wasn't much in the 30s. Maybe like a Hypno occasionally. Yeah, here's where we have some big battles. And this is what can be a very challenging rival fight, especially if you skipped most of um, Silphco. Because remember, I was like at level 37 and one or two at 36. When I started, now I'm 2 at 38, the rest at 39. So everyone went up by two levels, on average, in this location. Here in Silphco. So that level difference can mean a lot, especially with... I would have been... Well, I am at or around um, my rival's level. I would have been two levels lower, therefore just below him. Would I not have beaten all the trainers here? So this is definitely a big challenge, a big fight. Especially the later rival battle that's here, a big challenge. I think the, the first optional one, Route 22, where he has the level 9 Pidgey and then the level 8 starter, can be challenging because of how early on you can fight him. And then if you're not prepared, that could be dangerous, in a sense. You could very well lose. Pretty sure I did that. Uh, I, I lost the first one in this walkthrough. Let's try Jump Kick, I haven't seen that yet. Well, it's not too impressive yet. It'll be a lot more impressive later on. What was I going with this? Yeah, the Route 22 rival, dangerous. Starting with this rival fight. Actually, a lot of the rival fights, maybe even Pokemon Tower, if you do Pokemon Tower as early as you can. Could be dangerous with um, Gyarados. If rival has Gyarados, that could be a very dangerous Pokemon. 
But this rival onward or the rival fights, I would say, are difficult. With my Pokemon, with the levels that they're at, with the moves that they have, the fact that all of them except for Vulpix are not fully evolved, it's not too hard, it's not too difficult. But for a standard playthrough, especially if you're playing for the first time, it's hard. Alright, they seeded me, they'll get some healing out of this. Better be able to beat them on the next hit, unless they Razor Leaf and beat Aragorn. Oh, they actually took up one of my Pokemon. Well, that's a confirmed critical hit. Basically, because of how different um, critical hits work. Razor Leaf has an increased critical hit at chance. And in Generation 1, that means if your base speed is 64 or higher, and pretty sure Venusaur is higher than 64, you have a confirmed critical hit. Maybe it's another 1 and 256 things, a thing where you may not get a crit, but it's basically always. You can assume that you have it. And meanwhile, the Blastoise beats the Venusaur with an Ice Beam, so he's been defeated. Ah! <laughs> So, you are ready for Boss Rocket. Well, Alka, I'm moving up and ahead. But checking my Pokedex, I'm starting to see what's strong and how they evolve. You can see that on the Pokedex, not on mine. I go into the Pokemon League to boot out the Elite Four. I'll become the world's most powerful trainer. Alka, well, good luck to you. Don't sweat it. Smell ya. Alright, he's out. Hopefully this guy is happy that he's gone. Ah, you're not a rocket! You're gonna save us? Why, thank you! I want you to have this Pokémon! And it gives us a Lapras, which is a Water Ice type. Useful, uh, definitely on your team. Quite a good move pool with Ice moves and Water moves, I think it's Thunderbolts and maybe even Psychic. So, it has nice stats, so you could use this on your team. But I already have a water type that also uses ice moves. I have an electric move, I have a psychic move, so I will not be using Lapras in this walkthrough. Maybe I'll use Lapras in a future one? Not in Pokemon Blue. I'm gonna call you Carrier. As you carry people across the water. I ferry them, really. No room for Pokemon, it was sent to box number one. It's very intelligent. We can our lab, but it'll be much better off with you in the box. Or I'm not gonna take it out. Okay, let's heal up back at that healing place and then continue. Because Boss Rocket is up next. We go through here and we're on floor 11. Right, I did say there was one more standard guy, and this is him. The third out of the four mandatory battles. It was the Arbok guy on floor five before we could get the card key. There was the rival. There's this guy. Who actually seems to be a little stronger than um, the standard ones, because I think I, I think he had more than one Pokemon. And this one's already level 32. Makes sense to not have a basic grunt with a basic team. In between two very big fights. Three Pokemon. Nice, okay. Alright, Snorlax for the Drowsy, for the Psychic types. I was considering Mega Drain, but Psychic is still stronger than a super effective Mega Drain. And I didn't need to use the Psychic got a higher chance of KOing. Don't, please, don't what? Finish your sentence. You wanna see my boss? Yes. And I will go see your boss. Ha! Huh. Okay. So we meet again. The President and I are discussing a vital business proposition. Keep your nose out of grown-up matters. Or experience a world of pain. Her 
we go, our second battle against Rockhead Boss. Giovanni. Four Pokemon now, starting off with Nidorino level 37. Our rival started with 37 as well, that was Pidgeot. Giovanni starts off with a 37 as well, and Nidorino. A Pokemon that we had for a short time, but we traded it away for Terry the Nidorina. Kangaskhan, that's weak. To fighting, jump kick! Goodbye. In a way, I hope jump kick misses sometime soon. Preferably never, in a way, because then I can still just do hits. But I want to show off that it's one HP of recoil damage. Aragorn's not too bad at this fight. But here comes his best Pokemon, Nidoqueen. I don't have a super effective move against that. Level 41, not even higher than the Venusaur that Keys had. But they are going to hit pretty hard, but that's less than half. That's even less than less of a percentage of it, their HP than it did against Venusaur. Luckily, only a poison sting from Nidoqueen. It hurts, though. Guard Spex is not going to help you out. Double Edge. And Rocket Boss Giovanni has been defeated. Yes, you did lose again. Last it all. You ruined our plans for Sylph. But Team Rocket will never fall. Okay. Never forget that all Pokemon exist for the glory of Team Rocket. I must go. But I shall return.